lifting. That's hot springs there for you. We have Dr. Patrick Sito here with CHI St. Vincent's. And uh, he's going to talk to us today about the causes, and the symptoms for, and treatment for diverticulitis. Uh, he is, uh, what kind of surgeon? You want to say this for me? I'm a, I'm a colon and rectal surgeon. Oh, colon and rectal surgeon. Okay. And board certified. So thank you so much for coming on the show today. Uh, thank you for having me. We're not going to hold it against you that you're from <laughs> Kentucky, but you live here in Little Rock now. So yeah. you got out as fast as you can. Yeah. What is diverticulosis? Well, diverticulosis is basically, it's the high pressure in your colon that causes these outpocketings. So when they actually get inflamed, you, mm -hmm. be, you have diverticulitis. Okay. Um, surprisingly, the reason why you get diverticulitis and diverticulosis is because it's high pressure and is related to eating a lot of red meats, refined sugars, and flour. And also when we don't have enough fiber and vegetables in our diet. Um, actually, surprisingly, in the United States, the incidence of diverticulosis is probably around 5% by age 40, and by the time you get to 80, it's almost about 80%. And if you were to implement a better diet with more fiber and, mm -hmm. and what was the other thing? Less sugar? Yeah, less sugar, less eating red meats, et less, Okay, I can't cut out red meat out of my diet completely, <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah. but limit the amount. This is something that is avoidable. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so what are the signs that somebody does have this? Well, typically the most common signs is having abdominal pain. And most of it is really on the left side because the diverticulosis is usually occurs more on that left side. Um, with that said, other symptoms are related to constipation, diarrhea, fever. You can have some bleeding uh, and nausea, vomiting. But this is very uncommon in young people. Yes, correct. Um, surprisingly, even though I say about 80% of the, pop, uh, of the population by 80 get diverticulosis, only 10% of them actually move on to get diverticulitis. Okay. So when somebody experiences these symptoms, because I'm looking at these symptoms, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, gosh, it kind of reminds me of uh, appendicitis. Correct. Uh, yeah. So how do you go about getting a correct diagnosis? Well, typically the physician will get a thorough history and do a physical exam, um, and they get a high suspicion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once that they get that suspicion, they'll order some labs to confirm there's some infection, and then ultimately they will get a CT scan, which is an imaging of the abdomen and pelvis, and that will show inflammation of the colon, and they can make the diagnosis. And it's treatable? It's very treatable, yes. How would you go about treating something like this? Uh, it kind of all depends on the symptoms. So if it's mild, uh, you can typically take oral antibiotics and go home and just and do a lot of hydration. But when they are a little bit more severe and, and moderate to severe, then you have to be hospitalized and you have to have IV antibiotics and to treat and get the inflammation down. Down the road, once the inflammation resolves, it's always recommended about 8 to 12 weeks later to get a colonoscopy just to make sure that this is not cancer because that does kind of present the same symptoms. So this is a process to go through once you think you have this and then once you get diagnosed. Uh, the risk factors? The risk factors is obviously have, eating a high consumption of red meats, okay, and also includes having fiber, uh, having low fiber and vegetables in our diet. Um, another documentation is also with uh, uh, smoking, alcohol, normal consumption of insects uh, do uh, put you at higher risk for diverticulitis. All right, so this can't be the only thing that you treat. You probably treat a lot of other diseases as well and sicknesses. Yeah. Um, I specialize in colorectal surgery, so I also I am a specialist doing minimal invasive surgery. So I do laparoscopic and robotic. Um, some of the common diseases I typically treat is colon and rectal cancer, diverticulitis. I do constipation, incontinence, hemorrhoids, fissures, fistulas, uh, pretty much a whole broad spectrum. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming. Oh, thank on. you for having Great me. meeting you, well, and welcome to Little Rock. Uh, thank you. All right, and. Uh, Again, Dr. Sito there at CHI St. Vincent at 701 North University, Suite 203. The phone number, if you would like more information, is area code 501 664